Welcome to Al Qarra from Chad. Our team came all the way down to Lake Chad, which is threatening to disappear by the day. The lake went down from 25,000 square kilometers to almost 2,000. That's a loss of almost 90% of its waters. Joining us today to talk about this phenomenon, His Excellency Senussi Imran Abdullahi, Executive Director of the Lake Chad Basin Commission. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. There has been a lot of literature about Lake Chad in the last decade. Most of it is myth and most of it as well is truth. Could you make the uh, part which is true and the part which is myth, please? Well, the, the truth is uh, Lake Chad, which you like you said, I opened in the remark, uh, was 25,000 square kilometers, has reduced to 2,000 square kilometers or thereabout, losing 90% of its surface area and water. That is the reality. And the reality is also that there are over 30 million people whose livelihood depend on the Lake Chad resources for their, for their daily life. And this is a, a serious challenge to us and serious challenge to the region. The myth is we had, and we've seen in writing, Lake Chad disappeared about two or three times ago <coughs> in many, many hundreds of years ago and came back. That's the myth. But we, at this time in, point in time, we do not want to relate ourselves to that myth. We don't have the luxury of waiting to see that Lake Chad disappears and come back. We want to save the lake. Over 39 million people live off this lake. Yeah. Has it always been the case as far as this number is concerned? No, uh, as far back as 1964, uh, when the uh, commission was created, the census was about 9 million people depend on the lake. Uh, you can see now it's about 48 years, and uh, the rapid uh, rate of uh, increase in population in the sub-region is evident. Uh, we now register about uh, 39 million people, and if we continue and in the same situation, more people will be uh, available to be counted. And we're talking about uh, 40, 45 in the next uh, 10, 10 years or so. So is the human factor playing a role in this catastrophe that's taking place? Certainly, the human factor is uh, playing a role. If you consider uh, the demand of 9 million people compared to the demand of about 39 million people. And, uh, but the reality is, it's not uh, the major culprit of this uh, problem of the lake chart, it's climate change phenomenon. Uh, as there has been consistent uh, high ambient temperature over the decade, and that is also translated into huge evaporation uh, from the surface of the lake. And as you can see with us here, there are huge abundant aquatic weeds that are consuming so much water uh, as a result of low inflow coming in and sedimentation uh, making itself uh, available for the grass to grow. And these are also issues that we need to address to see if we can make uh, this grass into uh, useful resources. Could be biofuel, could be translated into some form of fertilizer, it can be turned into some form of resources that we can use to inject back into saving the lecture. Could you talk about the um, ethnic layout of the population which inhabit this region and how do they cohabitate with each other? There is no social problem with the people around. But occasionally social problems arise as a result of water stress. In the years where there are the serious drought, of course people have to look for water animals to look for water and those are flash points for conflict. But on general terms, people within the, the, the sub-basin and uh, across the frontiers, they live like brother, Africans and sisters, and there's no <laughs> problem, like I said. But of course, water is a potential uh, hotspot for problem of, uh, of uh, conflict if it arises. If the Lake Chad could be replenished, can it be replenished and how? Yeah, Lake Chad can be replenished. There are uh, several options available to us, but the critical ones are trying to adapt to climate change by reafforestation and uh, educating people to you uh, to involve, imbibe the culture of integrated water resources management in the sub-basin. But the real one is the transfer of water from our sister uh, sister uh, country around uh, the Obangi. Uh, in the Congo Basin. 
this uh, uh, engineering fit is, is on the table and we are working hard to see that we actualize it. It's the only guaranteed source of replenishing the lake chad on a sustainable basis. And uh, there is the political will. Uh, there is also, uh, we've come to the conclusion engineering wise, is it's uh, technically feasible. And we've looked at the economics involved and we see that it's uh, economically viable also. Uh, what we lack now is the resources and we are working hard to see that we have the resources to actualize this program. When you say the political will exists, could you give us a little outline of who is contributing to the preservation, if any, of this lake? Yeah, the political will involves the member states uh, in trying to commit uh, their resources. That's uh, Nigeria. Niger, Cameroon, Chad, Central Africa and Libya. And of course we, we have the Congos, the Congo DR and the Congo Brazzaville. They are holding the position of observer in the Chad Basin Commission and they are pol politically committed because they are active members in, sus in ensuring sustainable development in the region, so, uh, ensuring peace and security in the region, uh, ensuring economic uh, integration in the region. And when we have this program of inter-basin water transfer, they stand equally to benefit because the program will involve construction of hydropower schemes that will give the, the Congo, the two Congos and the Central Africa, the much needed power they, they require.